Hi, take five. My videos have all gone wrong for some reason. Anyway, uh, this is just uh, a video showing my latest acquisition, and this is a analog scope by Tektronics. It's a 2215A, and uh, I prefer using analog oscilloscopes with analog equipment um, because there's a lot of things that these can see, these can measure, compared to the modern Chinese. Um, digital scopes you can get in their plastic cases and you know very lightweight and everything LCD displays this can accurately see things like eye patterns from CD players whereas a digital scope very very difficult to see that sort of thing um, so these have got many advantages plus uh, you can get a really good uh, Tektronix scope like this which, which can measure every, anything the average um, engineer repair engineer or whatever uh, needs um, and it is it's simple inside really so if anything goes wrong with this it's more simple to uh, repair uh, when you are buying an analog scope with a CRT display you want to obviously check the CRT display and make sure there's no burning in it uh, remnants from um, you know if I was to leave this triangle wave and square wave here for a few days like that it could actually burn into the phosphorus and I get a permanent reminder of the, the uh, signals I was looking at so you don't want that you want to check all that check that both channels are working check the time base is working all the trigger modes are working that the intensity and focus work um, yeah just give it a good check out but these are generally pretty reliable I would say um, more reliable than than digital storage scopes for example. I did own in the past a Tektronix 2235 I think which was a 100 megahertz um, storage scope uh, with a CRT display as well. That was really nice the fact that you could scope a waveform and it would give you a, a digital um, rep representation on the display telling you what frequency, what voltage Although any engineer worth his salts can work out what frequency this is, you can work out that that is uh, what frequency that is by counting the um, the um, partitions here, uh, graduals. I forget what it's called now. Uh, also, you can see what amplitude it is um, by looking at the volts per division here um, on your probe, which is ten times. Or if you've got a one time setting on it, you can just look in this window here. But this has basically got everything you could need, really, I would say. Um, and it's, it's cheap, as I'd say, cheap as chips, really. Um, I would much, much rather have something like this than a piece of Chinese plastic rubbish with an LCD display sitting on my bench. And this would be a lot more reliable, I would think, than. Um, something this scope is from the, the late 80s I believe this model and it's still going strong it's absolutely fine everything's tested working fine now going into this scope obviously in channel one I've got the probe adjustment tester there which is a, a square wave one kilohertz square square wave of half a volt peak to peak that's what this is showing down here and on the top is a triangle wave put out by my Jantec signal generator. And this model I could definitely recommend. You've got a lot of features on this, a lot of different waveforms that you would need uh, when you're repairing or testing analog equipment. Uh, this is putting out a triangle wave and I've got it here on a sweep function here. Uh, starting at 40 hertz, going up to four kilohertz so if I start this this is what it's doing and if you're uh, using a um, if you're working on a system uh, a monitor for example you can actually change the waveform here from triangle to sine wave this is a good way to test a, a speaker system if I go into the modulation here on the speaker system, press on, here we go. This would totally test um, a speaker system where the resonant frequency is and how far it would go down. 
obviously the frequencies you can set this is 40 Hertz to 4 kilohertz um, and also you can set the duration of the sweep I've set it to seven seconds but obviously you could set it to whatever you want in seconds to properly test out a speaker system so this I recommend as well Tektronix analog scope I recommend and this this is a DSO 138 this is a digital scope very very cheap you can get them from China and uh, Aliexpress or eBay or Mercado Libra depends where you are these are all right to a point these are all right for just um, checking that you've got a signal there you can't really use this um, as, a, as a decent scope because they are very limited and very awkward to operate as well. In order to change the time base, you've got to move your cursor over to the right uh, point there and check that out. These are cheap and cheerful. Uh, they can be used to check the presence of a signal, as I say. Um, you can hold the waveform as well. There's hold functions. Um, there's measurement functions which will display what the frequency of the waveform you've got there and what the volts per division is but uh, on this particular one it fills up half the display at the top and you can't see the waveform properly so it's a bit annoying uh, but these you know if you want to uh, learn how to use scopes or you're just starting off this would be good for a start off point but obviously something like this cheap and it's really good now if you're working on digital equipment and uh, you need a digital scope then may I recommend this this is a Hewlett Packard 54615B it's a scope from the 90s this is one gigahertz one giga samples per second sampling 500 megahertz which is huge this is a fantastic scope these were about three or four thousand uh, UK pounds at the time I got this, I got this cheap because it had a fault on it. Uh, but now I notice the prices have come down a bit because you can get uh, very full featured, very fast um, Chinese oscilloscopes which uh, do more than this will with a coloured display. This is uh, not a coloured display version. I think you can get a, a 5416C, which is a coloured, it's got two colours on it. But and that doesn't really make much much difference really but this is two channels as well this is great great scope one of the main reasons why I bought this analog scope here is because I didn't want to break this this was cheap so if I break this it's not a real massive loss but if I break this this will be a horrendous to try and repair so uh, I'm gonna mothball this put into storage because at this stage I'm not really doing um, much digital or I'm not doing digital which means that I've got to sample what I'm putting the probe on because basically a digital scope will sample what you're probing um, within the realms of its sample memory in here how many packets of data it can take in and store into RAM. Uh, this is real, real time, real time. So it has got no restrictions at all. The only restrictions this particular one has got, because it's not a storage scope, is uh, it won't tell you what frequency is, is changing here, what it's going from and to. Obviously I know that because I'm putting it out here. Um, and the other thing about this, obviously, um, let me just, Turn, turn that off okay uh, the other thing uh, is you can't print any sort of if this is static if I turn this uh, thing off now oh turned it off at the wrong time there we go if I turn it off now um, you can't actually print what's on here um, via a, some sort of port a lot of these digital scopes you can actually print what's on the display to actually save it but when you think about it how unless you're working in a lab and working on crucial measurements how often are you going to actually use that 
facility. How often are you going to need to zoom in and analyze something in real time? With this scope here, there we are, you can magnify what you're seeing by 10 times. So here we go. If I turn this on again now and stop it at a higher frequency, nearly 4K here, if I pull this out, I can reduce it by 10 times. So um, this is now um, 40 hertz. Uh, so if it's 10 times less than um, 4,000 hertz, oh, 400 hertz, I think that is, isn't it? Something like that. Excuse me, my maths, my brain's not working correctly. It's still early in the morning. But you've still got quite a lot of things you can do with an analog scope. Um, so I would recommend this. Anyone who's starting in electronics or anyone who's working mainly on analog stuff, I can recommend this scope. Um, another scope that's a storage scope that's still got a CRT is the 2235. I had one of those a while ago and that was an excellent scope. It told you the frequency measurements. You had cursors you could bring in to measure the height of the waveform and what the voltage or frequency was. Very, very good. Only problem is with those is they've got a huge board in the top there. Um, and if you get any problems with them, which you can get from time to time, a nightmare to um, to service really and to fault find anything digital like that. This, if anything went, went wrong with it, it's much easier to fault find and repair. So. I like the simplicity of this, and I don't really need to use storage functions, so this is the way to go. Um, and this is made in, a, in the USA, so it's not uh, Chinese, it's got very good components within it. So this is what I recommend. If you really want a digital storage scope, rather than getting some uh, crappy Chinese rubbish, I would recommend an old school Hewlett Packard like this from the 90s. They're really, really well made, uh, really reliable, good components in there. They don't have Chinese capacitors that have only got uh, lifespans of uh, 2,000 hours or 5,000 hours. They have proper, decent capacitors in there which have got a long lifetime. So, yeah, that's what I recommend on the digital side. Or something like a Tektronix um, 2235 um, digital storage scope that is good but bear in mind the added complexity of the digital side if you don't need a digital s a storage scope I would just go for a analog what you put in there is what you get out and this Jumtech I could definitely recommend this DSO 138 I just use it to check that there's a signal present but really for any sort of use on a, even a hobby um, side of things, they're pretty much useless, but the price you pay for them is, is very, very low. So it's useful maybe to have one of these on the side if you just want to quickly check whether there's a signal there or not. All right, I hope you found this video uh, useful. Um, thanks very much for watching.